What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create. And today guys, we're gonna be setting up the Mechanical Drill, which is one of the more versatile blocks that Create offers. Now the reason I say that is because the Mechanical Drill itself can be set up completely standalone, and if you give it some rotational power, it's gonna break the block in front of it. It's really simple to work with, the Mechanical Drill itself is really cheap, and when you use it in the right circumstance, it's just really effective at what it does. So you can also use it in extremely intricate builds that are crazy complicated, require a significant amount of investment, and are just absolutely insane. I've never seen builds as crazy as these in all my time playing out of Minecraft. I'm super excited to get to actually set those up, but we're not gonna do that today. We will do it way later on in the series. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys that it's not today. Um, I know you guys have been asking in the comments if we're gonna be doing those, so yes, we will, but just not yet. Today, we're gonna be learning to walk before we learn to run, and we're gonna be setting up a cobblestone generator that uses the mechanical drill to break the cobblestone. And the reason we're doing that is because we want infinite cobblestone. If you do not know, infinite cobblestone in Create is actually extremely valuable. It's not equivalent exchange valuable because we can't get anything from it, but we can get infinite iron and infinite gold. We can also get infinite bone meal, but I think I'm really one of the few people that cares about that, even though I'd like to point out that that's basically infinite power if you follow this amazing setup right here. Dropping some nice self-promotion, but uh, infinite bone meal means infinite wood, means infinite furnace engine and flywheel power, which has very high stress capacity compared to anything we've set up before. So basically it's infinite power. But I know really the main draw is people want infinite iron and infinite gold when they're playing modded Minecraft. And if you do not have an automated mining setup, which we do not right now, then it's even more valuable. So just to do a broad overview of how you get there, uh, we have cobblestone right here. And the uses of it, if we crush it, you get gravel 100% of the time. Then when we use gravel, uh, if we go to the uses for that, when we crush that, we get sand, 10% chance of clay and 20% chance of flint. Well, when we go to uh, the bulk washing of gravel, we're able to get 25% chance of flint and 12% chance of an iron nugget. So right there, that is how we get our infinite iron. And the way we get our infinite gold is because when you get the clay, if you look at the uses for clay, you can then make it into the block of clay, smelt it down into terracotta, and then that, when you crush it, gets you red sand. And then that, when you wash it, gets you a 12% chance of three gold nuggets. So yes, way more of a lengthy process to get to infinite gold than it is to get to infinite iron, which is kind of funny because technically in modded Minecraft, most people actually want more iron than gold. I always feel like iron is the resource that just gets absolutely burned through when you play modded Minecraft, but we will set up stuff to make both of these as an infinite resource. Also, if you were curious, I think we might've gone over this before, but basically if you follow this tree all the way down, but instead go to sand and you just keep crushing it, eventually you get a 5% chance of bone meal. So that's where the infinite power comes from, but we're not gonna be worrying about that today because like I said, not everyone has a tree farm, only the cool people, i.e. myself obviously have it, but we really don't have too much to set up today that's super complicated. The only crafting we need to do is going to be crafting um, the mechanical drills themselves. So we can go to those. And like I said, they're really not expensive at all. So we're gonna be crafting uh, eight mechanical drills. And I don't know why I have three extra iron in here. I'm sure there was supposed to be a reason, but I guess there isn't. Um, then we have eight hoppers because we are gonna have a hopper per mechanical drill. And we might actually want one additional one just to move it a little bit further out from where our setup is. We've got a chest to store it in. We've got eight buckets of lava. If you have never set up uh, a cobblestone generator before, the way we're gonna be doing it is the pretty common way. You do not need exactly eight buckets of lava. I'm doing it because I want it to look nice. Um, you can get away with a few less depending on how you set it up. We've got water to make an infinite water setup, but we're gonna use eight buckets of water too. And then we've just got miscellaneous things, shafts and case shafts, gearboxes, rotation speed controller, large cog wheel, and then glass for actually setting it up and making it look nice. Uh, I guess it's nighttime, so we should sleep first. Um, but the reason that we are going to use all those miscellaneous things at the end is I'm going to try at least uh, and make it look nice with pulling the power from this flywheel down here 
into this room over here. And the reason we're gonna set this up here is because with the infinite cobble here, I'm hoping we can have an adjacent area for doing all the processing to make it easy to loop the bone meal at least back over here for this farm. So we'll have to deal with the power coming through the wall later, but the first thing I wanna do is just set up the cobblestone generator itself because it's pretty annoying to set up in a compact area, but we should be able to do it. Um, so I've kind of made an outline over here. Um, also, I know this is a really fancy room, but technically thematically correct because it's mostly cobblestone for the cobblestone generator room. So you guys can talk about my decorating skills as much as you want, but I'm just going to claim it's themed like the equivalent of a Halloween party uh, or something like that. So, yep. <sighs> nice reasoning there. But like I said, we're going to use glass for this, but we can go over the general basics. Basically, We'll put the source block of the water right here and let it fall down. We will have the mechanical drill right here. The cobblestone will form right here. The lava source block will be right here. And then the hopper will be right here. Now, the important thing to note is you need to have the water falling down a block. If you don't, you will get the uh, cobble or the, it won't turn into cobble. It'll turn the lava source into obsidian. So just something to keep in mind, there are other ways to do cobblestone generator setups, but this one is the easiest one, in my opinion, to do uh, multiple, just sort of in a linear fashion. We're going to do eight, like I said, and then we're just going to have hoppers running into each other to a chest at the end here. So we'll set this whole thing up with glass so it looks really nice uh, and we can just kind of see what's going on in there. Um, so we want that open and then we'll put all the mechanical drills right up here. We're going to have to... I don't know why I shift click this one. We absolutely do not want to shift click it because we want them facing down. And then we can put uh, all the hoppers going into each other. We want the chest. Ideally, we probably want it to come out, uh, but I want to keep in mind where everything needs to be. We could probably put it, we could probably put it right there and I'll need to get one more additional hopper because we'll go like this. And then the hoppers will stay below the mechanical drill. So we'll need one additional hopper, which I believe we have exactly one extra one uh, from when we set up. Well, it was actually from last episode's setup, so we have it just sitting in here. Oh, I had an extra one and I already pulled out in my inventory. Okay, well, completely forgot that one was there. Um, but yeah, so we'll have it like this. I'm really just stalling on setting up the water and the lava because those are a little bit of a pain to do. Um, but we'll start with the water first. So we want to make sure we have it enclosed on both sides and we'll want to put those like such. Actually, we're going to, I know I shouldn't have broken that. It's not worth it, um, but we'll put that down there and then we're actually good to put the water down uh, on the far side of that. Oh my gosh, that's right. We actually have to do a legitimate setup over here first. I'll just break the floor to make this since with it falling, it does not want to make us a nice source, but we'll fill this up. And the main thing is you have to make sure, or at least I want to make sure that the lava is properly enclosed um, before we put it down. So it doesn't kill us. So we'll pick those back up and we can fill in the floor over here. Okay. So now the lava is going to go right here going across. And so we want to make sure that we have glass below it right here. And then that hopper will just suffice for now on that. Then we want to block on the side of it. And I'm going to have to, I guess the torches won't really matter because the lava will put off some light. And then thankfully, because it's glass, we can open that chest there and then we'll just run this glass along the back here and we'll cover the top eventually just so that you know we don't have any accidents but we should be good to hop up there and put the lava in now and then it should generate our cobble for us so we'll get all these buckets out at once so we can just kind of quickly click it in there i guess actually we might have some issues we might need to go up one more have a little bit of an easier time putting this down and we're gonna have to come up here anyway a little bit because we need to get the rotational power to the drills themselves uh but we will do this here there there 
swap these out. You can see we have the cobblestone forming. And you can see there what I mentioned, which was uh, you don't actually need each one of these to be a source block. You can leave like one empty space in between, but I wanted to have it just perfectly flowing down with the graphics and not have it flowing sideways. So that's why I did that. Uh, but you don't need to if for some reason you don't, you know, you're limited on your lava that you can get. Um, but I think it actually looks pretty nice. And now really, like I said, the only thing we have to do is get the rotational power over each one of these drills. So uh, I'll actually come back up here and we'll set up the gearboxes first. So let's just make sure we don't fall in. And what we're going to do is just set up a bunch of gearboxes over these so we only input the rotational power on one side, this side over here. So we'll get these out. We're going to have to change these to the other ones like that. We'll put them down over each one. And then there we go. We got one more we got to do. Okay, there we go. So now we can cover this up. We don't have to worry about falling in this lava again, thankfully. Patch that up. Patch this up over here and head back down. Okay, so now comes what I actually think is the hardest part, and that is going to be getting the rotational power up there properly. And ideally, we want to increase the speed. And that's why I do have the rotation speed controller is because we can up the speed of this um, if we want to. Unfortunately, as you can see, the issue is with bone meal uh, or without bone meal, this isn't always constantly running. So we have a lot of charcoal in here, but it's not always constantly running. So... Uh, yeah, we would like infinite bone meal for that. Um, but let's see, do we want it to come down in the middle here? Because we, we could do that. We could have it come right down here and maybe pass through the floor if we don't want to increase the speed at all. Uh, we would need to do, it's an encased shaft. We need to transfer, huh? That's a gearbox, right? Why, why can't we uh, change? What? Oh my gosh, why does that always happen? Can anyone explain to me why that happens every episode? It makes me look like I'm losing it uh, multiple times an episode. Um, but we'll put down that and then, oh, here's the awkward part is we need to put down another one somewhere. We might have to go down here. So we can properly put that down. And then the question is, so if we come through here, where do we end up? I know I should pull out a shovel. Okay, so we end up right here. So we're one over from where it needs to be. So what we can do is fix that in the middle of this wall so it looks nice. So we can fix that right here and then switch it over and match here. So we will do a gearbox right outside here. And that's gonna allow us to bring it to the side here. Then we'll do another gearbox there. And then another gearbox there. And then we can run this to a vertical one right there. And that'll be good. Cool. So we'll do a vertical one right there. And then we'll be good to connect those. And that should actually be good. So that's not going to increase the speed at all. If we wanted to, we could. It's not completely necessary. At a certain point, um, it doesn't really benefit you that much to have it increase. But I want to see how it functions first. So what we actually need to do is go upstairs and grab some stuff that we can cook down. Uh, actually, we probably could. Well, we've got some oak in here and some oak there. Do we have any other gross? Yeah, I don't really like dark oak. We haven't used that for anything. It's just been sitting there since we chopped down some of those trees in the earlier episodes. But if we throw this in, it should be able to, we'll actually throw it in. We'll throw the oak in here and then we'll throw the dark oak logs there. So uh, I guess that was pointless. We could just throw them both in there, um, but it'll start running and we're going to want to close up this area. It just occurred to me that we need two of these uh, to fix the wall that we destroyed properly. So there we go. And there we go. That should be an encased shaft, but I'll fix that later. And 
There we go. That should also be an encased shaft, so we'll fix that later. But you can see now that these are all spinning and they're breaking the block slowly. They keep going, it reforms, they break it. And if we look down here, you can see that we are getting our cobblestone brought all the way over to the end. So I think this looks absolutely awesome. It's a really simple setup, um, but I just, I love how it looks seeing this come in the side here, go up. And eventually, like I said, this right here, this chest is gonna be infinite iron and infinite gold and infinite bone meal, but laugh at me if you want. I think the bone meal is the most useful part for me. That's what I'm most excited about, but I probably, I, I assume most of you do not feel that same way. But now we can just dump some of our extra cobble in there because now it will serve a purpose. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. I know it's a super simple build, but trust me, trust me, it is extremely useful. And if you're going to want to follow along with some of the future episodes, it might just be the next two episodes. Uh, you're going to need this because you're going to need the cobblestone supply coming in to actually make use of those infinite resource generator setups that we're going to be working with. Um, so... I would advise you to make this in your world if you ever plan on using those or want to experiment with them. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and happy and busy with life. And I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl At the end of a black hole Cold, lost and upside down Faces swirling past me All my memories rolling vastly